This week at Starbase, teams were seen cutting, welding, and replacing components on Mechazilla's arms in preparation for the anticipated Flight 5 catch attempt. Crews were also hard at work in Mega Bays 1 and 2, pushing forward with the assembly of the first Block 2 Starship and keeping the Super Heavy Booster assembly line moving. Now let's dig into this week's update. Starting off this week, on Friday afternoon, the Sarens Crane used its auxiliary hook to install additional safety netting on the new launch tower. These net-covered steel frames are installed as a precaution to protect people on the ground from falling debris. Up the road at the build site, Ship 33's aft section was rolled out of the Star Factory building and through the ring yard. This first Block 2 aft, which is mostly untiled at this point, was taken straight into Mega Bay 2 in preparation for integration with the rest of the Starship. Around that same time, across Remedios Avenue at the Rocket Garden, a crane was spotted working over by the B14.1 test article. It appears that SpaceX was installing new load points following the most recent round of simulated catch testing, indicating that another round is planned. That night, the upper part of Ship 33, with the new four transfer tube arrangement sticking out from the bottom, was lifted off of the turntable and moved over the aft section. The aft was then attached and the two pieces were tandem lifted back over to the turntable to be welded together. On Saturday, at the Sanchez site, crews were spotted removing the tanks behind the hydraulic accumulators on the chopstick carriage. It wasn't clear at the time why these tanks, which had been installed on the carriage when it was still at the Roberts Road site in Florida, were being removed. On Sunday morning, a new interesting development was observed in the Flight 5 catch preparations as the hard stops were removed from the chopsticks. These cap steel tubes stuck out from the inside of each arm and would meet in the middle when the arms closed, preventing them from crushing a vehicle between. It seems possible that given the flex we've seen in these long arms, the hard stops were an impediment to a possible successful catch. That afternoon, over at the new orbital launch tower, the Sarens crane was back to work, installing additional safety netting on the upper levels of the structure. The addition of these nets is a good example of how SpaceX is proving and fine-tuning even the construction of the launch infrastructure and not just the rockets themselves. Back at the build site, a super heavy grid fin was spotted being lifted by a telehandler and moving towards Mega Bay 1 before being set back down. Just minutes later, an interesting white structure was spotted being moved into the same area. While we hadn't seen this item before, it seems quite likely that this could be a grid fin installation jig. A short time later, at Orbital Pad A, one of the high-pressure gas tanks on the chopsticks carriage was hooked up to a crane and lifted out. A few hours later, a new tank, almost certainly one of the ones removed from the Tower 2 carriage the day before, was lifted and installed in its place. Crews continued to work on Mechazilla's arms throughout the night as SpaceX continues to push forward in their preparations for their first catch attempt. Monday morning, concrete trucks were seen backed up in the ring yard, replacing concrete that was removed during recent construction efforts. Over at the Sanchez site, a clamp arm was lifted for installation on the under construction booster transport stand near the site's main gate. This stand, which has been under construction for quite some time now, will be only the second of this current design of a super heavy stand. Over at the new launch pad, a crane lifted a section of chopstick carriage rail for installation on one of the tower legs. The rails where the prefabricated modules meet had been left off during stacking and need to be replaced once welding is completed. Late that morning and into the afternoon, workers removed additional COPV tanks from behind the hydraulic accumulators on the Tower 1 chopsticks. Back up the road at the build site, a ship flap storage rack was brought into the ring yard from the Sanchez site, utilizing the rear entrance between the mega bays. The rack was brought up to the front and parked near the entrance next to the Star Factory building. A short time later, the rack rolled onto the highway and down to San Martin Boulevard before eventually making its way behind Star Factory. That evening, a ship aft flap was spotted being moved through the ring yard bay by a forklift. 
The flap was eventually taken into the Star Factory building, perhaps taking a different route on the way to meet the previously relocated flap stand. Late that night, work continued on the chopsticks. New tanks, likely once again from the Tower 2 chopsticks carriage, were lifted and installed where the old tanks had been removed earlier in the day. Tuesday morning, the ship quick disconnect on Tower 1 underwent some test movements. While a lot of focus has been on the chopsticks lately, work has also been underway on the ship quick disconnect arm as SpaceX works to prepare for the next launch. Lower down the tower, a new bumper pad was lifted up to the port side chopstick. These seem to be the same design as those used in the recent testing, indicating that SpaceX is happy with them for the time being. It appears that this may have just been a fit test though, as the pad was lowered back to the ground a short time later. That afternoon, it appeared that fit tests were underway over at Tower 2 as well. A section of the carriage skate rail was briefly lifted to the joint between modules 5 and 6 on the far side of the tower from Nurdlecam. This is also a good indication that the welders have probably progressed to higher sections. A little later, back over at Tower 1, a new bumper pad was again lifted to the port side chopstick. This time, however, the pad was actually installed. That evening, looking through the chopsticks, we can see that workers were busy removing gas tanks from the bank on the starboard side of the chopstick carriage, similar to what we saw previously on the port side. Overnight, work continued on the chopsticks with four additional bumper pads being lifted and installed on Mechazilla's left arm. In the early hours of Wednesday morning, several curved pieces were lifted onto the chopsticks. These are likely additional supports that will be added to the chopsticks, similar to the steel reinforcements added last week. Looking into the windows on Star Factory, a stiffener ring was lifted off of the top of a ring section by one of the building's bridge cranes. Once the ring was removed, the section moved to another location in the structure. That afternoon, behind the berm near the fluids bunker, a pair of vaporizers were picked up by a crane and relocated. With SpaceX working to reconfigure the area following the removal over the big vertical commodity tanks, a lot of the equipment here has been shuffled around in the recent months. That night, the tower end of the chopstick landing rails were raised and lowered as SpaceX continues to work on and test Mechazilla's catching hardware. Early Thursday, a concrete pump truck extended its boom and began a new pour at the office building. It appears that concrete was being placed near the joint along the east side where the larger part of the building meets with the smaller three-story building on the back side. While the concrete pour was underway, over at the ring yard, a pair of ship tank pressurization piping assemblies were wheeled out of Star Factory and into Mega Bay 2 for installation on Ship 33. Around that same time, down at the launch site, another curved reinforcement was lifted to the chopsticks for installation. Later that morning, the fourth and final section of Booster 15's methane tank emerged from the Star Factory building and was parked outside of Mega Bay 2. Since this Super Heavy already has a fully stacked LOX tank, once the section is welded to the rest of the methane tank, mating the two tanks will be the last stacking operation remaining. At the same time, over in Mega Bay 2, the first of the pressurization piping assemblies was lifted vertical for installation onto Ship 33. About an hour later, the assembly installation jig came back into view empty and was laid back down. That same morning, down at Orbital Pad A, another four bumper pads were lifted and installed onto the port side chopstick, bringing the total number of pads installed up to nine. A look at the Star Factory building from Rover Camera showed us a new entrance being made into the building. Given the look and location of this new human-sized entrance, it seems that this will be the factory's main entrance. Late that morning, the second of the pressurization piping assemblies was lifted in Mega Bay 2 and installed onto Ship 33. Back at the launch site, a concrete pump truck unfurled its boom and it prepared to begin work near the base of the new launch tower. Over at the first orbital pad, a pair of the curved reinforcements were removed from the starboard chopstick. A few hours later, the landing rails were raised for a brief time before being lowered back to their resting positions. Back at the build site, one of the pressurization pipe jigs was moved through the ring yard and back into the Star Factory building. 
A few hours later, the starboard chopstick underwent some slow swinging motions. These movements were likely to verify the recent work to replace the tanks on the carriage. As dusk fell over Starbase, we could see that the new lights were installed across the front of the orbital tank farm. That night, the bottom of a fully stacked Ship 33 came into view for the first time as the Block 2 Starship was lifted off of the turntable and transferred to the center work stand inside of Mega Bay 2. Switching over to Florida, on Friday morning, Falcon 9 Booster 1085 was lifted off of the deck of a shortfall of Gravitas and transferred to the dockside stand for processing. That night, Booster 1083, topped with the modified Crew Dragon capsule Resilience, was rolled out to the pad at Historic Launch Complex 39A in preparation for the ambitious Polaris Dawn mission. Late Saturday morning, the rocket was raised vertical in preparation for its pre-launch static fire. That afternoon, a short fall of Gravitas was towed back out to sea in preparation for the next Starlink mission. A short time later, Go Cosmos also headed out to sea. While it wasn't immediately clear what the vessel's mission was, it seemed most likely that it was to serve as downrange support for the Polaris Dawn launch. Early on Sunday, fire erupted from Launch Complex 39A as SpaceX performed a static fire ahead of the Polaris Dawn launch. While Falcon 9 static fires have become increasingly rare in recent years, SpaceX still performs them for manned missions. Around that same time, Bob headed out to sea in support of fairing recovery operations for the Starlink Group 8-6 mission. Just Read the Instructions was also towed to sea in preparation for the Polaris Dawn launch. While SpaceX now does return to launch site landings with manned missions to the ISS, the unique flight profile of this mission necessitates a drone ship landing. On Monday afternoon, the crew access arm was retracted away from the Dragon capsule resilience at 39A. A short time later, the rocket was laid back down into a horizontal position. Thanks to a post from SpaceX, we know that there was a helium leak on the ground side of the quick disconnect umbilical that needed to be addressed before launch. In the early hours of Wednesday morning, the Starlink Group 8-6 mission lifted off from Space Launch Complex 40. This was the record-setting 23rd mission for Booster 1062. While the launch was a success, unfortunately the booster appeared to suffer a failure of one of its landing legs during touchdown on the drone ship. This caused it to topple and explode, promoting the FAA to ground the Falcon fleet again, though this time only for two days. And to cap off this week's update, on Thursday evening, Bob returned to Port Canaveral carrying both of the recovered fairing halves from that Starlink mission. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already, guys, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Lab Padre, out.